Disclaimer, this is a lifestyle channel. I know this is a running shoe and for elite runners, the best of the best. And I wanted to try it casually, which I did for this shoe as well. Um, and a lot of people didn't like that, but it is what it is. The fact of the matter is Nike released a brand new running shoe that uses ZoomX technology. And I wanted to give it a go and let you guys know my thoughts, if it was worth buying from a casual perspective or not. Yeah, let's go ahead and get into the video. What is going on guys, Hess here, collectivekicks.com. If you guys want to shop this week's top sneaker deals, check the link in the description and happy shopping. So today I might make a couple people angry because I have this pair of shoes right here and I'm reviewing them from a casual perspective and most people are gonna say, they those are not casual shoes, these are only for running and only for elite running and marathons and everything else and which, and I got that pretty clear from those people that thought that I shouldn't have this shoe right here, the 4%, but I wanted to try this one anyway because I like the 4% and I loved what the potential offerings were with Zoom X technology and the carbon fiber plate and everything else in between on the 4%. It was just a crazy shoe and it was so light. And a lot of times there are crossovers from sneakers. So you'd be kind of living under a rock if you didn't think uh, a running shoe could potentially be a shoe that you go to the grocery store in or a running shoe couldn't be something that you can walk around in casually because they're shoes and they're made to be put on your feet. But I will say in your guys' defense that Nike engineered this obviously with the intent of running long distances. It is made to go one direction, forward. It's not made to go side to side. You obviously can't play basketball in these shoes, but can you wear them casually is really my question that I had and why I bought a pair to try them out. So that is what I wanted to do. This video is about this shoe right here. This is the Nike Zoom X Vaporfly Next Percent. And the retail was $250 on the flagship running shoe right here. And I will say that that price point is kind of crazy, but it is something that I was interested in seeing. Anyways, there was some things that I definitely really liked about the shoe, and there's definitely some things that I did not like about it. So let's get into the video. So one thing that I liked that Nike corrected from the previous one is they called it out on the box better. On the original one, they said there was the Nike Zoom Vaporfly 4%. They called it Zoom, but it featured Zoom X technology on the midsole. The Vaporfly Next though says Nike Zoom X Vaporfly Next Percent. So at least they call it what it is and called it Zoom X. This is different though. So for those wondering, the material is different. They like changed the formula for Zoom X or I don't know what they did, but maybe it's just the texture on the 4%. It's like shinier and more plasticier. And this feels like a, just more rubberized. Um, I don't know if you guys can see the difference, but I can definitely feel the difference. You could see it more in the front section here. It just has more of a gloss and like a different layer. And this one, they added a little bit of a different design. So it feels like this is just a covering, a coat maybe over top of it. I don't know what they did to change it, but they definitely changed it up. Some information from Nike is you could see the different layers of the shoe. It does have a built-in full-length carbon fiber plate. It has an all-new vapor weave material for the upper. And the midsole is obviously made for speed. Check out how aggressive it is. It's obviously inspired by world-class runners. The vapor weave material is kind of like a hybrid of the other materials we've seen. It definitely looks different than the 4%, obviously, as you could see here. But it's more see-through than the other one. You have a huge Nike swoosh along the side of the shoe, which has a little bit of like design to it, which looks pretty cool, actually, in my opinion. The laces are offset to the side, which looks really funky as well. So they're obviously all the way over here. They have hyperfuse material down here to hold down the laces. And then you have the Vaporfly tongue with some more reinforcement and kind of hyperfuse material. The tongue cutout looks very similar to the 4% as you could see. Very minimalistic upper, obviously super duper crazy lightweight. Uh, there is another Nike swoosh on the back right here and kind of an iridescent look. But then the part that really matters is this midsole. Huge, crazy Zoom X midsole and super lightweight, has a carbon fiber plate down the middle of the shoe, which does give you that propulsion forward. And it does feel like you're just rocking like this quite a bit when you're walking around. But you could see like this does not bend. Like this shoe, you can't bend it because it's so crazy, crazy firm inside of the shoe versus like the Adidas Boost shoe where you can obviously bend it around. Because of that carbon fiber plate, you definitely have that rocket propulsion forward with every single step as you move like this, which is exactly what you felt like in the Vaporfly 4% as well, which is why I really like this shoe from the beginning because of that crazy feeling and that crazy sensation of rocking forward. So they definitely continue that feeling with these ones and it actually feels more so in this pair than in the previous. One thing that I also wanted to note is just look at the sheer stack of that Zoom X. Like it's that much bigger 
than the previous version of, of the uh, 4%. I mean, look at this thing, it's just massive. And because of that, there is an uneasy, unsteady sort of feeling on your feet. Now, I know a lot of people were mad at me because I didn't lace these ones up and they felt a little bit uneasy um, as well. And you guys are right to some capacity, like if you lace them up snug, they do feel a little bit more stable. But I did lace these ones up pretty good and they still felt pretty unstable uh, because of the massive stack on the shoe. Also, it's like you're on a platform and they're so darn skinny that it's just not wide foot friendly at all. Speaking of not wide foot friendly, you could see how the, the toe box area is really, really wide, which is great, but then it goes down and goes to this narrow. Like, so my foot's just too wide for this section right here. And it was actually pulling the Nike swoosh to the capacity because the upper doesn't flex. So I really felt like uncomfortable in the shoe because it was just overlapping uh, because of my foot just being too wide for the shoe. So maybe I know that this isn't for me because I have a wider foot than most elite runners out there, but it's kind of like, man, that sucks. I mean, it would be a comfortable shoe if they made it a little bit wider foot friendly um, or made a wide foot friendly option in my opinion, because those are the only complaints. The upper is not flexible enough for wide feet and then the shoe is too narrow for wide feet. And it really just led to like an uneasy feeling. But the one thing I will say that was the biggest letdown was actually the collar support here. And this actually digging into my heel, it actually like opened a cut on the back of my foot after wearing these for a day. It was not comfortable at all. And I had ankle socks on, but they weren't the lowest ankle socks, but it was lower than this. It's so rough that it actually cut my foot. Leave a comment if anybody has these and it actually happened to you as well, because I can imagine runners want very minimal socks that are not gonna come up to here. And this is gonna definitely rub. Um, and for some reason, like this padding is really thick around here, but it just doesn't account for that. So maybe it's just my stride is weird when I'm walking around. But, uh, but it definitely was something noticeable. For $250, I wanted to explore if this was a viable option from a casual sneaker, and I would say probably not. There's so many better shoes on the market for the price point that it's really not worth the $250 to buy these and have them just not fit perfect, you know what I mean? Like, uh, I should have learned my lesson for the 4%, these ones were good, and there were things that I was hoping that they would improve, but they basically just took those things and made them worse on this version for people like myself from a casual point of view. That being said, there are other options that Nike offers that are way better from a casual perspective. And one of my absolute favorites is this shoe right here, the Pegasus Turbo. The first version, and the second version is great too, but the first version has Zoom X and then React on the bottom, so it best of both worlds for comfort. Really, really comfortable on feet, it has a detached tongue and fits well for casual wear. And this shoe, I mean, I have four or five pairs of these, they're so amazing. This one I would choose on sale for $120 right now for most of these ones versus the 250 for this pair right here. It's just not worth it from a casual perspective. For runners, I get it. You guys are the ones that win probably this, this round and it just goes straight to you guys because it's not a shoe that I can wear. It's too narrow and it's just too unsteady for me. But, uh, but leave some comments, let me know what you guys think. Is it a shoe that you guys have tried or not um, from a casual or not? I mean, if you're gonna walk around Disneyland or something like that for the entire weekend, this shoe could have been good if you didn't have it digging into your heel, but the overall comfort is there and the rocket propulsion and feeling like you're being like rocked forward all the time is amazing. It feels really good. It's just not very good for standing around in with that rocking feeling all the time. It feels like you're on your tippy toes the entire time. Uh, so it's just something to keep in mind, but all in all, not worth 250 from casual in my mind, it's still a great shoe. And I love seeing the evolution of what they're doing with Zoom X and seeing how this is gonna hopefully translate to some casual lifestyle shoes in the future because they start off with the intentions of purely performance and that usually cascades down to lifestyle at some point uh, along the line. And then eventually they start just creating them for lifestyle, which is what I'm hoping to see some really dope Zoom X options in the future. But that's the video, hopefully you guys enjoyed, hopefully it was informative. Thumbs up if it was, subscribe if you're new to the channel, notification bell to be notified of when the videos go live. And thank you again for watching. Um, have a great rest of the day, peace guys.